Hello, FlossTube, I am back. So my name is Jackie, AKA Adam Hart Cross Stitch. It's been um, <laughs> quite a long time since my last FlossTube episode. I think this might be episode number four or five. Let me go ahead and look that up. This is <laughs> this is floss tube number six and I think I might have jinxed myself with the last episode that I posted over a year ago because I titled that one it's been a long time little did I know just how long it would be before I filmed the next episode but here we are maybe we can just jump right into it with some general life updates I obviously can't go through everything that has occurred in the past year and however many months but some pretty big life changes pretty recently um, see um, I made a really really big change about a year ago I started a new job um, I made a switch from working in academia where I work in clinical research to transitioning to industry and working at a startup. It was an incredible opportunity. I worked with some of the best people I've ever worked with, uh, but the, the level of time and effort involved in that job for the past year was a lot. <laughs> um, and something I've talked about a little bit a little bit on my TikTok channel, but I don't think I've really talked about here so much is that I do have an autoimmune disease. It's called Bichette's. It's really not all that common. Um, you know, you can look it up if you're interested in learning a little bit more about it. Typically, I would categorize my disease anywhere from mild to moderate, depending on, um, you know, my flares and, and how often they're occurring. But it's been a pretty manageable um, disease for me, which I'm very grateful for. But definitely the past year, um, the stress of my job uh, was really starting to have an effect on kind of like my overall well-being, especially when you have an autoimmune disease, stress can be sometimes a trigger for flares. So about two months ago, you know, after a lot of consideration and discussions with my husband, I made the really big decision to actually quit my job and take a total break from, you know, the corporate life and the workforce for at least the next six to 12 months. I would love to make it permanent, um, but you know, life is life. It is a big risk, but, but I think uh, both my husband and I are really excited to see, you know, what this next chapter could potentially be. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work out and I, I go back to work. Um, you know, it's a huge privilege to be able to do this and that's not lost on me. But now I have more time to do things like film floss tube videos, post those. Uh, I really want to focus on doing more craft content and focus a lot more on my business, my small business, Adam Hart Cross Stitch. So in this episode and future episodes, you know, I definitely want to do a little bit of life updates, show you all what I'm working on, uh, go over any haul if I have any, and then at the, at the end of the episodes, I will give like some general small business updates for anyone who is interested and wants to hear about what's going on with Adam Hart Cross Stitch. <sighs> so yeah, I would say that um, kind of explains a little bit, uh, you know, the delayed absence and just how busy things got for a while there. I am officially at the one month mark of not being employed. But yeah, so I have more time available. So I really am hoping to jump you know, back into the floss tube community. I love you all so much. I love being here. I think one thing I have realized is for me, I am more of like, I'm not a monogamous stitcher. Like I have a handful of whips that are all going at the same time, but I do tend to stitch on one thing at a time and for a pretty good length of time. Because of that, uh, it takes me a while to kind of have enough content to film a floss tube. I'm probably only working on one, maybe two things on any given week. I think right now I'm gonna plan for posting floss tubes once a month. I'm gonna aim for the first of the month and kind of just give an update on everything that I've done that month prior. So we'll see how that goes, but let's 
let's jump into some project updates. Because it has been such a long time, I was like, ooh, maybe I should do a whip parade and show all of my ongoing projects to kind of remind everyone, you know, just things that I'm working on and what's happening. But I was too tired to pull everything out. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you what I've been working on most recently. And we're going to start with um, two fully finished objects. So this first one, uh, this is Moon Glow by Nora Corbett. I look at her like this is so beautiful. Not to toot my own horn, but I mean, really credit to the designer here. I just think this was an absolutely gorgeous design and I can't state that enough. So I used essentially everything that was called for on this. Um, it's stitched two over two on the 32 count uh, Mediterranean sea linen. I use the called for DMC and Karen Water Lilies threads and the called for Mill Hill beads. This is actually the first um, cross stitch I've ever done that had beadwork included. This isn't my typical style of cross stitch. Like I really love full coverage, but I just thought this one was so gorgeous I had to stitch it. And look at this framing, y'all. Like this is absolutely gorgeous work. I think custom framing is like a com its own art form in and of itself. Um, and I actually reached out to one of my TikTok buddies, my, my TikTok cross stitch friend, uh, Leanna. She does framing and I was like, hey, kind of crazy, can I send you this finished project and can you frame it? She lives on the whole other side of the country. So we were both a little bit nervous about how it would get, you know, sent back with the glass. Um, you know, this is a decent size project. It's not huge, but she was thinking it might just be small enough that she could safely ship it over without the glass breaking. Thank goodness it didn't break. It arrived safe and sound and she did just like such an incredible job. I'm gonna try and in insert a little picture with a close-up of the matting, but it's just so beautiful. Like there's the smallest hint of sparkles. Um, she could probably give a nice rundown of what the different matte finishes are and what the, um, you know, whether they're silk or linen, cause I really have no idea, but I do know that it's beautiful. And it was a really fun collaboration. I honestly would have never thought to do the purple and she suggested it and it, completely makes this. So it was just so fun to be able to work with her to get this framed. So I'm really proud of the way this turned out. I feel like the stitches look really clean. I feel like my beadwork looks really good. Again, not to toot my own horn, but I got an email the other day um, saying, you know, basically asking for a call for submissions for my county fair. And they had a cross stitch category. They actually have a handful of cross stitch categories. So I decided to go ahead and enter this. Um, I had always thought with cross stitch judging that they like have to look at the back. So I didn't think I could submit a fully framed piece, but they actually say in the instructions to come with it framed and ready to be hung. So I'm thinking it's gonna be okay. I've never done this before, so I really don't know what to expect. It's a little nerve wracking, the thought of like dropping this off for two weeks at the county fair. Um, but I figured why not? I'm like really proud of it. I have no idea how competitive or non-competitive cross stitch is at my county fair. Um, I live in Ventura County in Southern California. It's pretty good sized. Um, the fair is a decent size too. It's not nearly as big as like LA County or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of excited. No idea if she'll do well. Um, but I figured why not? So I will definitely keep you all updated after the fair happens and let you know how it goes. All right, and next up, I have uh, one more finish to show you. I just worked on this actually this past week. So this is a tissue box cover. It's a Victorian house. See the tissues pop out of the top just like that. This is a plastic canvas. I actually picked up an entire kit off of eBay. It's this one right here. And this is something I had just kind of had this memory of my grandma's house and she had these like tissue box covers. She had a bunch of different ones and they were little Victorian houses. And 
I don't know, this has happened to me before where I just randomly remember something from my childhood and I'm like, I need to recreate that. So I started looking online um, to look for these plastic canvas tissue box cover patterns. There are a good amount out there that you can still find, but I had a really hard time, like I wanted to find that exact one that she had. And I honestly don't know if this was the exact one, but this is the one that came closest. Um, so this pattern, I could not find it in circulation anywhere, but I did find the kit on eBay and I'm like, I think that might be the one, or it's at least very close to the one that I vaguely remember in the back of my mind. So I went ahead and purchased this. Um, and it came with the pattern, the yarn, and the plastic canvas. I'm trying to see what year this was. I think it's sometime in the 90s. So yeah, the copyright is from 1990 by Needlecraft a la mode. So I, you know, I think I picked this kit up maybe two months ago. I started working on it over a weekend, put it down, and then just kind of like picked it back up maybe a week and a half ago and finished working on it. I did post a little, you know, video series to TikTok, but I actually did film a lot more in-depth, like step-by-step, -step, and I'm going to be posting a much more in-depth, like video tutorial on YouTube, if that's something that you're interested in. And yeah. I think this is super cute. I will say when it arrived, I had intended to just use all the yarn that it came with and use the colors that it called for. But as I started stitching with the yarn that came in this kit, the mold and mildew smell was like, like it felt dangerous to be breathing it in, I think is the best way to, to describe it. I was like, this cannot be good for my health. And I figured, I was like, there's got to be a way to probably get rid of this smell. Um, but I, I was feeling impatient and was like, I don't want to wait, though, to do whatever I need to do to, like, air this yarn out. It's not worth, like, my time. So I just made color substitutions with, like, scrap yarn that I have. And so ended up with this, what I think is a really cute uh, kind of purple and light blue Victorian house. So... Fun fact, I actually grew up in a Victorian house. Um, my mom had a like baby blue and baby pink Victorian house. So that's why I did the blue door, the blue trim, and then pink curtains to kind of like give a nod to the house that I grew up in. One thing with this is I constructed the whole thing. It actually tells you to hot glue the roof to the top so that it stays in place and the way that you get the tissue box in and out is through the bottom, so it'd be fine to attach the roof to the house. But I don't know, hot glue is really messy. I don't have a great hot glue gun, and I was like, I don't know if it really needs it. So I'm gonna just live with it with the roof kind of detached and see if it holds up. And if it's a nuisance, I'll go back in and hot glue the roof to the rest of the house later on. So yeah, fun little vintage things. Um, and I, it's kind of fun picking up like, vintage plastic canvas kits on eBay and working on them. So I definitely think I might do some more of that in the future, or at least, you know, just kind of get back into some more plastic canvas projects. I feel like it's, they tend to work up really quickly and it's a nice way to break up cross stitch sometimes. I really forgot filming floss tube videos and talking to the camera straight, like really <laughs> dries my throat out. <laughs> Is that everything I wanted to say about this? <laughs> oh, one other thing I really liked about this project, and for some of you, this might be like, you're used to seeing this. I am not used to seeing this, but check out the way the pattern is written. It's like, you know, someone drew this out on graph paper, like manually wrote in the, the symbols, which are all numbers in this case, and you know outlined it and and that's how they put the pattern together again maybe some of you are really used to seeing this i you know have been stitching in the day and age of computers and i'm not used to seeing like a, a handwritten pattern like this so that was i don't know i thought that was really cool all right on to whips i only have two to show um, only one cross stitch and then one little crochet project I'm working on. So we will start with the cross stitch. So 
So this is Poppies by Thea Governor. Um, I never know if I'm saying the name of that designer correctly. It, a little history with this one. So I first, you know, learned how to cross stitch when I was in high school. I think I completed one or two pretty small projects um, and then got into other crafts and never really like continued with cross stitch. And then maybe about five years ago, I just really was like, I want to work on a cross stitch project and went on Amazon, looked for kits, absolutely fell in love with this one. And I was like, oh, it looks kind of like big and daunting, but that will be fine. Like I'm crafty and I've done cross stitch before. It won't be that difficult. Um, got this kit. And when I first opened that pattern, <laughs> six pages. Um, it felt like I was trying to read a book in a foreign language. It was incredibly overwhelming. And I remember I put maybe like the first few stitches in on the, the fabric and then had to put it away, ran out to Joann's and picked up like a small, tiny, tiny dimensions kit. And I was like, I need, <laughs> I need to like relearn myself with something, reteach myself with something a lot easier before I jump into this thing. So I did. I worked on like one really, really small kit. I don't even think I finished it. It was just kind of a way to remind myself how to do the stitches, how to get them to look neat. Cause like nothing, you know, it, it just takes some, some muscle memory to get back there. Right. And then jump back into this. Um, I managed to get the first page, like one of the pages done. It's actually the middle. Um, and then put it down for a long time. And I haven't picked this back up for a really, really long time. And I don't know, something about 2023, I was like, I really want to get like at least one whip done. So I have had this in the back of my mind for most of the year, about a month ago, pulled it back out and have been working on it. I haven't gotten too much done, but I'm now working on this page. Um, so there are six pages total. And I would say the page that I have completed is where like the most amount of stitches are. So I do feel like the rest of the pages should go by a little bit quicker than the, the first one did. This is a little bit of a unique project, I feel like. The pattern actually, it's so it's 16 count Ada, but it has you stitching one strand of floss over one square. You know, typically 16 count, it would be two strands of floss. Um, so it made me like feel like I was doing something wrong <laughs> when I like first started working on this because I'm like, you can like see the X's like and see all the fabric. But you know, you can see as it starts coming together, it actually, you know, you can tell it is intentional and it gives like a really nice dimension and look to the flowers. So I do really like it, but it is a little bit different that it's one strand of floss over one square on 16 count. Um, I really love all of the florals by this designer and I would probably stitch 10 or 20 of her patterns if it weren't for the fact that you can only buy them as kits. <laughs> I get why some cross stitch designers opt to do this. They don't want to have their patterns made available electronically because it just opens up the risk of, of people, you know, stealing that intellectual property and, you know, copying it, selling it on their own. I get it. But I really don't like working off of paper patterns. And I know that if you use Pattern Keeper, they have the function now where you can kind of like take a picture of a PDF and try to scan it and upload it. I have not had luck with it. Um, not enough luck with it, at least that I feel comfortable like stitching the pattern up that way. Um, so it does kind of force you to work off of a paper pattern. I think the other really bothersome thing with these kits, and again, I'm not trying to trash the company or the designer, but they, you know, because it's a kit, it comes with the fabric, it comes with the floss. The floss is on, you know, floss cards that have the symbol, but they do not give you the DMC number for the symbol. So if you were to run out of floss, you have to color match on your own. They do not give you the floss numbers, which, you know, if you have a DMC color card, sure, you can try and color match, but it's just like, it stresses me out <laughs> when I'm stitching this 
And I feel like I have to save every, you know, centimeter of floss because I'm so paranoid that I might run out of floss at the end and then have to try and color match. And, you know, when there's all these like, it's, it's all oranges and greens. So it can be really hard to like, differentiate the really, really small difference in shades of like these different oranges. So like two little pet peeve, pet peeves of mine. Um, I think especially like, I think this designer makes some of the most gorgeous florals and maybe it's a good thing because I don't need another um, obsession where, I, you know, I'm stitching the same thing over and over again. So maybe it's for the best. But yeah, that's my current whip and what I have been focusing on the past month and probably what I'll continue to focus on for the next few weeks at least. All right, last up, a little bit of crochet. This is like a really quick small project, but I am making um, three big granny squares just like this. I have one granny square done. I have another that's a little more than halfway done and then I'm gonna make one more. Um, I'm going to show a picture somewhere here. Ta-da! I saw um, this user on TikTok, and I'll include her handle here, um, make this, like, adorable frickin' cover for her office chair. And I was like, I'm immediately yes. Immediately yes. <laughs> like, such a quick fun project. Um, I have tons of scrap yarn so I'm also kind of always looking for ways to just like use up scrap yarn and make something fun and functional and I just thought this office chair cover was adorable. Hold on I have to take this. Um, I took a phone call and have absolutely no idea what I was talking about but essentially yeah working on this fun little crochet granny square project to make a little seat cover for my office chair. I thought it was a super cute project. Um, I've never made these like big granny squares before and they work up pretty fast. So now of course I'm tempted to do like a scrap buster blanket. That's just one giant granny square because it's just really quick and easy and I like it and I like using up all the different colors. All right, that's it for project updates. So I have a 10% off discount code for the Positivity Lifts Stitch Along from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. You can use Adam Hart 10 Lifts if you're interested in that sale and want 10% off. Um, I think I'll have a little photo to insert here. Um, and they are sending me some goodies over. So hopefully by next month, I'll have some things to show you that they are sending over. Um, it's not an affiliate code. It's just like, you know, 10% off for followers. So definitely use it if that's a sell that you're interested in. Let's talk shop, um, Adam Hart cross stitch. So, you know, definitely, um, it's been incredible running this small business, Adam Hart Cross Stitch. Um, if you don't know, I design and sell floss drops. I have four different floss drops that I make, um, one for blended threads, uh, just a standard what I call thread chip, which is like your run of the mill, you know, floss drop. And then I also have thread bobbins and thread hearts. And both of those are floss drops that you can also wind your thread around like a bobbin and then store in a bobbin box. Um, so it's a fun little hybrid if you know, you're know you someone who likes the functionality of floss drops, but maybe likes the um, storage solution of a bobbin. So I've talked about it you know, in the past. Uh, probably here, but, you know, also on some of my other, you know, TikTok and, and Instagram channels. But, um, you know, this whole business started with me first making these on a Cricut. And then I got a laser cutter to actually like cut these out from acrylic sheets in my home. Um, things just continued to be really successful. So then I started working with manufacturers so that I could like make these in bulk and have them like more widely available. Um, difficulties I had with manufacturing these with laser cutting was that I was, you know, 
having a tough time with the quality. Um, really not so much with the specialty thread holders, which are like in like the really fun colors, but just in the standard like clear, these are the thread bobbins, in the standard like clear acrylic ones, um, you know, sometimes the cuts whew, would be a little rough or, you know, the laser wouldn't be like going all the way through. So I'd be receiving these and have to do like a lot of extra time just like inspecting all the pieces and looking for any quality issues. I also ended up like just overfilling the bag. So if you bought like a hundred pack, you'd get 105 just because I know I would inevitably like maybe miss some that weren't perfect. I started working with um, one of my manufacturers and we decided to do a mold. Um, the reason I had like tried to avoid doing that previously is because it's really expensive to make a mold and definitely not something I, I could afford like early on in that business. But now for the standard floss drops as uh, my current inventory sells, the new inventory will start to be replaced with, um, you know, these that are created from a mold and the just quality, like it's just better. It's just a better quality. Not that this quality was subpar by any means, but like this quality is better. So I'm really excited about it. Um, it is, you know, a business investment and quite a leap to take, but the shop's been running, um, a year and a half now and it's steady enough that I feel like okay I, I can take this risk it would have been too scary to invest that type of money a year ago but now it feels like a risk that's like okay to take so yeah I'm really excited so right now it's just the standard thread bobbins uh, that are available in this kind of like new and improved um, product I think Probably the thread hearts will be the next ones to be reintroduced and then you know again It just kind of depends how quickly the current inventory sells for the chips and the blends to then you know introduce these revised products um the specialty floss drops that I make so the ones that are in fun colors Let me grab an example <laughs> like this here. So this is a purple haze color and this is the thread heart. Um, these will continue to be laser cut just because that's just the nature of these colors is it's like an acrylic sheet that they, you know, create these really fun swirled colors. They add glitter and all that. So these will continue to be laser cut. But I've had so many people asking, um, you know, for new colors. So I am getting a set of some new color samples uh, in the next two weeks. I may pick, you know, maybe some of my favorites and I think maybe do a poll on Instagram and have, you know, you all vote for which color you wanna see next. So stay tuned for that. Uh, pop on over, keep an eye on my Instagram if that's something you're interested in. All right, and last but certainly not least, uh, there's a giveaway happening right now. I am working with the Gloomy Gremlin. I will include her handle here somewhere. Um, and we are doing a joint giveaway. So she designs cross stitch patterns. They are fantastic. Uh, there's going to be one giveaway winner. It is being run through Instagram. So you can check out all the details over there, including the terms and conditions. But essentially, you just need to be following both of us like our posts and you can also share the post to your stories tag one of us so we can count it uh, for a bonus entry so really really simple to enter um she is giving away winner's choice of a pattern um so any pattern you know from her shop the winner can choose and she also has this adorable tote bag that will also be part of the giveaway for my part let me go grab them all right and for my part of the giveaway, I'm giving away um, two bags of floss drops, thread hearts, and thread bobbins in the copper ink color. And this is what that color looks like. It's like a semi-transparent color with this like really nice kind of coppery orange and then all these swirls of black throughout. I feel like it kind of fits um, with her brand, which is a little bit more like dark and goth. Um, yeah, very excited to be doing like a collaborative giveaway.
All right, the deadline to enter is this Friday, June 2nd at 3 p.m. Pacific time. It is limited to residents of the United States uh, just for shipping purposes. Uh, it's like an arm and a leg right now to um, ship to a lot of countries. I don't know how these prices fluctuate so much, but it's been like extra expensive the past six weeks. So yeah, I think that's all I've got. Um, I'm very happy to be back here. So grateful to this community. Um, you know, and in terms of my small business, Adam Hart Cross Stitch, like, again, I know that Floss Tube has been a huge, just driver in this business continuing to succeed from all of the, you know, videos that you all post shouting out the floss drops and talking about them. And I am just so incredibly grateful and so honored to be a part of this community and really happy to now finally have the time to become more involved in the community, post more content. Um, and if you know you enjoyed this and you want to see more, I'm so honored if you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Really excited to be here and post more in the future. So happy stitching, have a great rest of the day, and happy month of June. <coughs> Oh, I think that's it.